Hey everybody, welcome to a new video. Today's just going to be a really relaxed video, kind of a vlog style of our chicken coop and our chicken run and our four chickens. We just want to talk about a little bit about the tips and tricks that we've come up with um, while we have uh, the chickens. So, hope you guys just enjoy this relaxed video and we'll just jump into the run first. Okay, so one of the first things about a chicken run is how you feed your chickens. And we wanted just this most simple, easy way to feed chickens. So we kind of just came up with our own adaption of using the PVC tubes. So I'll have Katie here just briefly show you how we fill them up. It's just really easy. And this lasts for like a couple weeks. And we have three of these. So we have a scoop of food that we basically just put right into the top of the tube and uh, just fill it all the way to the top. And then we have a couple PVC caps that just go right on here and keep all the water out. Now these are three inch PVC tubes and they're attached on the bottom to the run itself and then they're attached on the top to the run itself. So they're very secure. And I'll show you the inside here in a minute. Okay, so I just wanna show you guys how we have this uh, water set up. So we have this, this uh, inch PVC pipe coming outside and we just take this off and then we can just take the hose and fill it up. Just kind of like filling up your gas tank on your car. And then it'll start shooting out the back once it's completely full here. Okay, so here's just a closer look. Uh, we just finished topping it off. So uh, there's this cap, one inch PVC with a 45 angle. And then it goes into this five gallon uh, water bucket. Uh, it's kind of like a water container and we have chicken nipples down on the bottom. So I'll go ahead and show you guys the inside of the both the watering and of the feeders. Okay, so here's the water. And you can see we just have some ch chicken nipples on there. So you just drill a hole and then they just screw in by hand. And of course all the chickens are sitting in front of it right now. There we go. So they leak a little bit, but the water lasts for over a week. They learned really quick uh, how those work by hitting them with, and then the hitting, getting the water out. Now these are the feeders. So like I said, this is three inch PVC. And then I took a three inch PVC cap and cut it and just kind of screwed it into the bottom here so the food doesn't just fall all out. So we used to have these just open and they would just pull all the food out and all the food would be all over the floor uh, of the run. But putting these caps on here and uh, just putting them on there worked really well. So it seems to keep the feed in the feeder a lot more. Um, they still pull it out and throw it around, but it's definitely better than what it was originally. Here's a closer look at the side. It's just one of those plumber T's or Y, I think they're called a Y trap. Um, and then we just have a cap on the bottom, Y trap, and then this cap right here, and then it just goes all the way up. And you can make them as big as you want. These are probably, I think it was a 10 foot piece. So they're about three and a, three, a third foot. And they work really well for them to eat out of them. Okay, so the run is about uh, 14 feet long. And the back is like five and a half feet tall and the front is five feet tall. And uh, you have basically I have two 16 foot runners that are two by four pressure treated and then everything else is two by fours. And it just attaches to the outside of the coop. And then uh, we just have this uh, polycarbonate roofing and it does a good job keeping it dry. Now, the most important thing about a chicken coop and keeping the smell away so what we notice is if it's dry. It doesn't stink if it's dry, but man, if it gets wet in there, it gets super stinky. So just gotta keep your coops dry. So this gate here is about two and a half feet wide. All it is is just two by fours framed together. I just put a support in the middle and then supports on each corner. And then we just have a simple latch system that's just like for a gate. Okay, watch out, girl. And you can see right here. And then uh, I just have a string that uh, basically is on the inside so you can open it from the inside in a handle. We used to put a carabiner on here because we didn't want the girls, our daughters, opening this all the time. Now we do have a couple roosts that they like sitting on out here. Now I do probably need to modify these a little bit um, because they're just really close towards the wall. So I'm gonna have to bring these out a little bit, but you can tell they're pooping on here so they love sitting on them. Um, they don't really like this high one, which I thought they would like this high one. It's actually uh, sits out a lot higher. So right here we have um, just a galvanized bucket 
and they like to dust bath in this. We like to put just uh, kind of a darker mix of a soil dirt uh, type of thing and they like to dust bath in there. Um, and it's also good to kind of keep your chickens entertained. So we just have a tire that like to sit on, the dust bath, we have a uh, chicken block or a bird block that they peck at. And then also we just have this old apple tree stump that I buried in the ground, they kind of sit on that. So as long as they got lots to do in here, um, they'll, they'll be fine. Now it's mostly for the winter because we usually have our chickens out during the day in the summer. Um, so over here is our ramp to get into the coop. Now I wanted something really simple, so I just took this, uh, I think this is a two by eight, might be a two by 10. I took the circular saw back and forth a bunch in each of these and it kind of made these uh, kind of notches in the board. And the chickens can just walk right up this without slipping. And then I'll have uh, Katie just pull on the the door here. So we don't really use this door that much because, you know, the coop is, um, they don't really get in the coop much just to lay eggs. Um, but basically we just have a rope and then some nails that uh, kind of make it have less friction and then it pulls on this. Now this is just a piece of quarter inch plywood and then I just put, um, these are one by twos. So I have one set here and then one overlapping and it kind of makes a channel for it. Uh, put the chicken, yeah, there's been a couple times we close it when it's really cold at night, like in the, in the winter, to try to keep it warmer in there, we'll shut it. Um, but in the summer, this thing's open all the time. And under here, I kind of wanted a place where the chickens could sit and stay um, out of the cold in the winter. It's kind of like a windbreak. And so that's what this area is. I basically just took um, old cedar fence planks and put them on this side and on this side. And in the summer, they love the shade down there. Now there's enough airflow for it to flow in and out, but they love sitting under here and dust bathing just in the summer because it's a cool place to stay out of the sun. Okay, so Katie's gonna just demonstrate how we open up the coop door, because we didn't really show that. Yeah, in the winter time, I come and close this at night all the time. Pretty simple. It's not automatic, so I have to come out here, you know, at night and close it and then come in the morning and open it for him. We just have this nut here that's on two nails and we just kind of measured where we wanted it and it just sits on those nails. And uh, it's been really good. Like I said, we only close this when it's extremely cold in the winter. It's basically open all during the summer. Now it's really important to make sure that your chickens are safe and um, you don't want any predators that can dig around your coop or get into your coop. So we decided to go with this um, heavier duty hardware cloth this is a lot stronger than chicken wire. And that is just stapled everywhere. You can kind of see where it's stapled. Um, and then on the bottom, we have that hardware cloth going into the ground a little bit. Um, and then we have a ton of rocks just going along this edge, just so it's uh, aesthetically pleasing. So along the whole front over here. And then along this area, we just have a bunch of pavers and we just didn't want it to be dirty when we're, you know, getting eggs and all that type of stuff. So you can see the pavers come around this side. You know, no predators are gonna get through the wood planks. And then we have pavers that go along the entire back. So we have the vinyl fence, rocks, and then pavers. So there's no uh, predators that are gonna be digging into this coop. Now, some of you may be wondering what uh, these white kind of boards are at the bottom. It's actually the same material that you make political signs out of some sort of plastic sheeting and the reason I did this is because the chickens scratch and throw their stuff everywhere like just dirt goes flying everywhere so all the rocks on the outside were filled with dirt and then all the uh, pavers back here was just filled with dirt and the dirt would never stay in so I found that if I put these plastic sheets and I've just kind of attached them to the hardware cloth just using some baling wire and uh, it just does a really good job. I have not done it right here because they don't really throw too much there, but it kind of goes everywhere inside the coop. You can kind of just see it. And it's done a really good job keeping all the dirt inside the coop versus going out because we kind of like to have our backyard really organized and clean and uh, chickens are not that clean. So you have to find ways to keep their mess uh, where they are. Okay, so Katie's gonna open this up so we can show you how we clean it out and. We decided to go with a large 
single door system. Now this is basically just two by fours and then um, OSB and then the exterior just all kind of screwed together. And then uh, we have just a latching system, just like, you know, really simple. So inside here, um, we have our deep, what is it called? Uh, deep litter method. Yeah, deep litter method. So this is just um, pine uh, shavings and it's about six inches deep. And uh, basically you kind of just toss it and turn it around every couple uh, weeks and it just kind of breaks down into compost. Now they do roost. Now they do roost up on these bars at night, so they do poop a lot right underneath here. So that's kind of the only thing we've ever had to clean up is just pick up these poop piles every couple weeks. It's not too bad. Um, now another thing that we thought was really, really useful was at the bottom here, um, I have this vinyl uh, flooring. It's just a single piece and it's kind of makes it like a bathtub in here. So none of the wood is going to ever be exposed to um, the pee or the poop of the chickens or any, you know, liquid. Um, it's kind of like a waterproof base. And I just used a small stapler to staple that everywhere. You can tell that our chickens are very socialized by our yeah. little girls because they're following us everywhere we go. <laughs> yep. Our girls kind of give them treats and everything. Um, they love the mealworms. Um, so yeah, this is the roost. It's just uh, two by threes. And uh, the inside of the coop is super simple. Just basic uh, two by three construction. So the whole construction of this is just very simple. I have four um, 10 foot two by fours. And these go in the ground, mm, probably about two and a half feet. And then I cut those off and then just kind of enclose the whole thing. And then kind of made some of these vents. And then I used some extra shingles that I had um, from building my shed and just kind of put the roof on there. You know, there's so many plans online of how to build a chicken coop, but if you've ever built a shed or, you know, done any type of construction, it's very simple like that. And you just have to use kind of common sense as you put things together, think about it, come up with a plan, and you're good to go. Um, another thing that Jason hasn't mentioned yet is that we have the store here so we can just push a wheelbarrow right here. And if we ever want to like really clean out this, we can just kind of sweep it all into the wheelbarrow, um, yep. you know, and start fresh if we wanted to. We haven't had to clean it out though. It's it's only been about a year, so it's not completely broken down. Um, but if you come in here and start digging, you can see you have some fresh stuff on top, but it gets more of a powder on the bottom. So it does break down. Um, let's go ahead and talk about the, uh, the nesting boxes. Now I wanted something super simple for the nesting boxes. So we actually used three milk crates and uh, we just use this same vinyl flooring here as a divider in between each one so they kind of have privacy and uh, it's worked really well. So we'll go around to the other side and check out the nesting boxes. Okay, here obviously is where our eggs are. Um, right now we get about an egg a day per chicken. So we're getting about four eggs. We basically just have this, there's no, this doesn't lock down or anything. It's just a, um, I think it's a one by 12 and I just have two hinges here. And it's heavy enough that we haven't had anything come in here. The problem with this was we had water that would come, you know, if it was a driving rain, the water would come down and get in here and drip in. So I just came up with this simple gutter system. It's just a piece of roofing flashing that I've bent. And so I've just screwed it in, it kind of slants down and then it goes into this bucket here. And that bucket fills up and we live in a desert, so we don't get much rain at all. But, uh, you know, when it does fill out, we just dump it on the grass. But you can see we just have three nesting boxes in here. And those are fake eggs, by the way. Yeah, these are <laughs> called ceramic eggs over here. So you have to start, when they first lay, you want them to not peck at their eggs. So you put these ceramic eggs in there, and then they start laying on them. Now, you definitely want good ventilation in your coop. So we have, you can see, um, it goes straight through. So we have both of these um, slits here. Um, and then I have ventilation up on this side and ventilation up in there. So it still stays pretty cool in the chicken coop in the summer, even when it's near 100 degrees because it's underneath this tree. So you also want to be very strategic on where you place your coop and your run because your chickens usually can't stand extreme hot temperatures. Okay, so we're going to show you how we set up this screen here in the summer to give our chickens some extra shade. That over there is west, so this face is west, so we get a really hot sun 
in the evenings where the sun just beats into the chicken coop. Luckily, we just had this lying around our house. Yeah, this was from a previous homeowner. It was in our front yard, but we found it to be perfect. So we just basically put this up, some sort of screen, sunscreen material, and um, it never blows off those hooks up there. And it gives the chickens a place to stay out of the sun because it just gets so hot. You know, last summer we had temperatures up around 103 degrees, and this is a west facing area, so the sun will just beat down on the coop in the evening. So, it just yeah. provides them some shade. Yep, just gives them some shade. So, here's a closer look. We just have two of these uh, kind of plastic coated, rubber coated um, hooks, one on that side, and then that one there. And it just gives a really good shade to the chickens in the summer. Yeah, yeah they want a treat. Yeah, let's get up something. Here, ladies. Over here. They know when it's treat time. Yes. It's just some chicken scratch here. They're just going to eat it right out of the thing. I was going to put it on your little plate. Can you scoop some out, Cleo? Get your little <laughs> hand in there. Pull some out. And put it on here. Hand it to him. I'm going for the good stuff. There we go. Cleo, what's all the chickens' names? Shelby. That one's Shelby. No. But uh, so Buffy, Shelby. So Shelby, Buffy, Blacksmith, and Little Piggy. She's the runt. Yeah, she's still kind of small. Them yeah, our girls the named heart. them. Yep. Yeah. They do a great job knowing which one's which. The hardest are the Buff Orpingtons because um, they look very similar. One has a more yellow head. And it's easy with these, these are called black sex links, um, to tell the difference because Little Piggy's just so small. So this is probably a good time to talk about why we even have chickens. Yeah, that's enough, yeah we, uh, they definitely don't save you money when it comes to eggs. This was more of a hobby and something to kind of teach our kids some responsibility and hard work since, you know, we're kind of limited in our backyard. Yep. <laughs> but we can have chickens and so they've been fun to raise and uh, get some good eggs out of it. Yep. Out of them. I think one of the other benefits to having uh, backyard chickens is just a really good um, constant food source. We always feel that it's important to be prepared for any type of emergency and having fresh eggs every single day um, is just another way that you can have that food in case you need it. Okay, so a lot of you noticed we have a dog. He is a Labradoodle, which is part Lab, part Poodle. And uh, Labradoodles are bird dogs. So how did we keep our bird dog from killing our chickens? Well, we definitely had to work with him when these guys were little babies. Um, because he definitely wanted to chain, uh, chase them and like attack them. I had a cage kind of set up out here and we let the chicks out on the grass and we just had to work with him to uh, and reward him, you know, when he was good around them. Luckily he's he's pretty easy to train. Now they're his buddies. He's I feel like he kind of is protective of them now, which is quite nice. Yeah, we have a couple cats in, in the neighboring yards and so he kind of sits out here and watches the chickens whenever they're open ranging, which is pretty nice. Now another thing we found to be helpful is just having a large container like this outside. Um, Katie, can you remember where we bought this? Was it Lowe's? Um, actually, I think it was Target. Target? Okay. Yeah, I think it was just Target. Well, it's basically just a really large um, outdoor container that keeps everything kind of dry. So in here we have their poultry bedding, which is just pine shavings, chicken scratch, chicken food, um, their scoop that we put in there. Um, and then we have some other smaller containers. Um, things that we used to clean yeah, up. Yeah, so we have a dustpan, a small rake, and a small shovel. And that's kind of everything that we've used to to just clean up the coop. It's not that much work to really clean up the coop, is it? Nope. And this thing sat out all winter long, kept everything dry and clean. Yeah. And it's all right here. Yep, so basically we wanted everything just to be as simple as possible. So, um, you know, putting water in there, putting food in there, uh, grabbing the food from here. 
Our girls have this little stool here that they stand on to get the eggs out. They do uh, get the eggs. One of them will sometimes, you know, they'll hold it up with one hand and then reach in and grab the eggs with the other. So yeah, if you guys have any questions um, or comments or maybe even tips and tricks that you guys can think of, um, we've really enjoyed having our backyard chickens. We've had them for about a year now. We used to actually have five chickens. We lost one chicken um, to a broken leg. But uh, other than that experience, it's been um, pretty positive. So I definitely would recommend this to anybody that's looking to um, pick up backyard chickens. Um, you can start with just buying a used uh, chicken coop or even building your own. There's so many plans online. So just find a way to do it and make sure you're having fun while you're doing it because that's the most important part is just making sure you're having fun with your family and make sure your chickens are well taken care of.